This story takes place when I was a child. I grew up in Hokkaido, in a town called Nemuro. When I was in primary school, I used to go to this park nearby after school pretty much every day. I would take this little blue plastic bat with me. I used to love baseball, and I loved that bat. However, one day, I lost my bat. I don't understand how it could have happened. I searched and I searched the park, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I remember I was crying when the sun began to set. It dawned on me that I may have lost it for good. I had to give up and head home without it. The next day after school, I headed back to the park to search for it, and the next day, but I still couldn't find it. About a year went by, and my dad got a job. That meant that we would be moving to Tokyo. Eight years go by, and I completely forget about my school, the bat, and that park. I was in high school, and I was enjoying the first steps into maturity. I wasn't doing the best in my exams, and I failed quite a few. I hadn't really decided on a career path, so my parents encouraged me to take extra study classes. I was in these extra classes after school, and one night I was heading home after another long day. In order to get home quicker, I used a shortcut through a park near my house. As I was walking through the dark park, I felt my foot brush against something. I looked down and it was something blue. It was a little blue plastic bat. I looked down thinking to myself, this is so nostalgic, I used to have a bat just like that. Oh, this one has a sticker like the one I had. My one had my name on it. I wonder if this has someone's name on it. I picked up the bat, thinking that I would try to return it to a nearby home, like I hoped someone would have done for me all those years ago. I read the name on the bat, and I dropped it. It was my name, my address from our hometown too. My mother knew how much I loved that bat, so she put a sticker on there just in case I lost it. This couldn't be here. It wasn't possible. I wanted to get the hell away from the bat and the park. I just started walking as quickly as I could. Eight years ago, I lost my bat in the countryside of Hokkaido, and today it's lying in a park in Tokyo. It really creeped me out. But then I thought to myself, I can't just leave it there, no one will ever believe me. I headed straight back to the park with my adrenaline pumping. I had to go and get that bat back. Only about five minutes must have passed since I had left the park. I went to the point in the park where I had dropped the bat, but it was nowhere to be found. I looked for it, like I had looked for it eight years ago, but it wasn't there. I ran home. Even remembering this story gives me the chills. Hi, Jay here. Someone in the comments hypothesized that this could have been some sort of glitch in the matrix, some slip in the space-time continuum. He said that if OP brought it home, it might have changed his life. Whether that's for the better or worse, I'll leave that up to you to decide. Someone else said that the original poster, if he ever has a son, he should buy him a blue plastic bat and let him take it to the park. And another requested an update eight years from now to see if anything else happened. Whenever I see a full moon, it reminds me of a night when I was in my second year of high school. For some reason, still unknown to me to this day, my high school prohibit commute by a bicycle. The reason was so vague and I barely remember it, but it was something to do with promoting a healthy mind and something about walking with a healthy mind. I don't know. Anyway, I live just over a mile away from school, so it would always take a long time to walk to and from school. I think it was about two weeks before summer vacation when this happened. I was forced to stay late after school. We had these club activities after class, and it seems like no one wanted to go home that day. Eventually, we all decided to leave, and it was already dark outside. I think that it must have been approaching 9 p.m. My friends and I left school exhausted. It wasn't anything new though. We often enjoyed staying out late, just not that late. We would all walk together, but on route, our numbers would shrink. 
all my friends lived closer to the school than I did. So I would always be the last one standing at around the halfway point. I would walk the rest of the way home alone. I would get off the main roads and walk to the back roads. I'd go through the dark alleyways and unlit streets in the attempts to shore my walkway home alone. Back then, my family and I were living out in the sticks, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. On the main road, the streets were bright and there were plenty of cars passing along. But these back roads were very dark and quiet. There were open fields either side of the road and it was pretty creepy walking there at night. That night in particular was creepy. I felt a strange sense that something was wrong. I don't know if it was some kind of weak premonition, but I was suddenly aware of my surroundings and I felt like something was different. I had walked those roads for a few years, but I've never felt anything like that before. It was eerily quiet. A gentle breeze was blowing and the moon was full. It was a cloudless night and I could see my surroundings well. Then, suddenly, I was made aware of the source of my discomfort. I looked down at the road and I noticed that there was another shadow casted by the moonlight besides my own. I felt chills race up my spine. Since when there was someone walking right behind me? And how long have they been there? I asked in my panicked mind. It was really scary. I didn't know what to do, but then I remembered something. I knew if I kept walking my route home and I turned the next corner, I would approach a curved mirror on a pole. You know, those mirrors that you sometimes see in the side of the road so drivers can see oncoming traffic approaching? Yeah, one of those. So I kept my composure and turned the corner and was horrified of what I saw in the curved mirror. There was a man behind me dressed in black wearing a, a white mask and a hat. It was truly disturbing to see someone dressed like that kind of get up out here in the middle of the late night. I caught a glimpse of something else though. He was holding something in his hand appeared to be a hammer, not a regular household hammer. It looked like he had a sledgehammer, like he had to cut it down and made it to a handheld size. Chillingly, he was walking at the same pace as me, mirroring my speed exactly only as was a few yards behind me. When my right foot hits the road, so did his. I could tell that this wasn't the first time he had followed someone home. The moment I saw him, I felt like screaming, but I thought that if I scream, I'd be dead. I was too far away from home to attempt to outrun him. Plus, I was exhausted from playing basketball all night at school. I made a decision. I was going to run up to the next house I saw with lights on. I passed two or three dark houses, utterly terrified that with each step it could be my last. Then finally, I saw a house with some light. I walked right up to the stranger's house and opened a door and Lally said, uh, I'm home. I walked right in and shut the door. I mean, I had to. I was running out of options. There was a family there watching TV in the lounge and they looked puzzled, but I managed to explain myself and I asked them to call the police and my parents. We looked out the window, but Guy with the hammer was long gone. It was a traumatic experience. I tried to give my best description of the man, but like I said, he was wearing a mask and a hat. I mean, all I could give him was a height, and that was just an approximation. 
something good did come out of this, I guess. My school lifted their pointless ban of commuting to school on bikes. So I cycled to and from school. And from that day forward, I refuse to stay so late. One thing that plays in my mind is, I wonder what would happen if the door was locked on that house I approached. Would I still be here today? Probably not. Something really weird happened about two weeks ago while I was taking my dog for a walk. I have a mixed breed dog called Kudo, and my son who's in high school used to always walk the dog in the evenings, but since he started at high school, he's been coming home later and later. He is part of a lot of club activities, so I decided to take Kudo on his evening walks. I didn't mind, walking the dog isn't much trouble. I work and go home pretty much the same time every shift, so I have time to vary the course for the dog now and then. I take the dog on one of four routes, so the dog doesn't get bored. Or maybe that's so I don't get bored. Either way, that's what we do. I think it's good exercise for me too, as I sit at a desk all day long. The night this experience took place on, I took the dog on what I like to call the shrine route. From my home to the shrine, it's about a 15 minute walk. There's a baseball field nearby, and at night it's a pretty good place to let the dog stretch his legs. Now, as for the shrine, there used to be a big beautiful Shinto shrine there, but it was destroyed in a suspicious fire. Rumor has it, it was arson. A smaller shrine was constructed by local volunteers in its place. I was walking along the outskirts of the baseball field when suddenly a car came speeding out of an alley. Its headlights were on. It wasn't dangerous, it was nowhere near me, but it made me notice something, because its headlights shone on an object up ahead. It was inside the baseball field. The object was a one liter plastic bottle. I know it's not that strange to see a plastic bottle in a baseball field, but this one was full of liquid and it had some paper sticking out of the top. The liquid was grayish, maybe black, and it seemed to be swirling. Now I'm not sure if that was because of the street light or the dark of the night obscuring my view. Either way, I thought it was a little weird. I guess that it could be some sort of cat repellent or something. I held Kudo's lead tightly. He started growling and trying to pull away. I decided to get out of there, it was weird. After that, Kudo's behavior seemed to change. Usually he's an even tempered dog, but that night he seemed wary and he was constantly sniffing for something. We kept going and we came to another corner about 50 meters up ahead. Kudo emitted a sharp yelp. It was almost like he swallowed the sound. Kudo seemed to point to something with his body. I looked ahead and I saw another one of those weird bottles with the paper in its mouth. This time, it was hanging from a hedge outside of someone's home. I wanted to get a closer look, but Kudo kept pulling me away. I tied Kudo to a nearby electrical pole and I approached the bottle. The liquid in this bottle was clearer. The paper had been folded many times and it was almost as long as the bottle. This is the part that really creeped me out. There was some sort of organic matter in there, like some kind of internal organ or something. It wasn't that big, but it was in there. It was slowly rotating, like the other I had seen. I really wish that I hadn't seen that, it was disturbing. I wondered if it was some sort of prank made by some kids. Some twisted kids who had taken the organs of a fish or a frog and displayed them in this strange, semi-ritualistic manner. No, the more I thought of it, I couldn't convince myself that this was the work of kids. It was time to leave the area. I wanted to get to the shrine to finish my walk. I walked quickly, and Kudo didn't seem to mind. I usually turn back when I get to the main gate of the shrine. I don't think it's a nice place to bring the dog into. I felt the presence of someone behind the rows and rows of Tori. You know those red gates that you see at shrines? I saw a shadow moving. I heard the rustling of footsteps of someone unseen, and I couldn't take my eyes off of the direction I perceived them to be coming from. 
amidst the red of the Tory gates, I finally could faintly see someone as they drew closer to me. It was a middle-aged woman wearing Japanese-style clothes. She was carrying a heavy cloth bag ahead of her. She was holding it with both hands. I could see the spouts of seven or eight of those plastic bottles that I had seen in the baseball field. She got closer. She terrified me. Her face was bright white, with layers of thick makeup. She passed me by as if I wasn't even there. She was solely focused on whatever she was doing. She glared at Kudo, and my dog whimpered. She left us stunned and frightened. Kudo vomited on the walk home. I'm not sure if it's related. He didn't eat that night either. I thought about taking him to the vets, but he seemed to get better in the morning. Naturally, I stopped walking that route after I reported what I saw. I don't think the police were that interested in my story. Perhaps they thought I was just a bored housewife with an overactive imagination. Well, that's the way they made me feel. I don't know what happened with those bottles, and if there are more of them, or if they are still there. I asked about the shrine with colleagues and friends, and I heard a couple of rumors. There were a further two reported outbreaks of fire. These reports were called in. These reports were called in, and when the fire brigade arrived, nothing was reportedly burning. It's very weird, and I feel like something's going to happen around here. I constantly feel on the edge. I don't know what's going on. Something strange, though. When I was in the fourth year of elementary school, 10 years old, my parents put me in a cram school. It was just in the outskirts of our town. I had to go there twice a week from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. I guess that sounds kind of excessive, but to me it was reality. In order to get to my lesson, I had to cross the railway line. It was exclusively for freight trains. There wasn't ever many times where the crosswords were blocked by barriers. So usually I was able to get through there without an issue. One night, I head home after finishing my class. I was riding on my bike as usual, and I was surprised to see that the barrier at the railway crossing slowly descending. It blared out that noise to alert that a train was approaching. I had no choice but to wait for the train to pass. A few seconds turned to a minute or two, I guess, but no train passed by. I looked across the track and saw a little girl. She just stood there just beyond the reach of the streetlight. I could see her, only just I could tell she was wearing a red dress. She appeared to be carrying a yellow bag over her shoulder too. She was younger than me. She looked like a kindergartner. Her head was hung low. I couldn't place the expression on her face because it was hidden by her hair. I thought, whoa, she's alone and it's pretty late. The ding 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 of the crossroads echoed around, yet no freight train passed. I felt awkward looking at her, so instead I looked up towards the starry night sky. I was thinking to myself, where the hell is this train? I was wondering if there was some sort of malfunction with the crossroads. I was bored of waiting, so I started to get irritated. I noticed something else slightly strange, too. I noticed something else slightly strange, too. Usually, I would see cars and other pedestrians passing through. But in that moment, it felt like there was no one but me and the girl in the red dress in the area. The atmosphere felt strange that night. I felt uncomfortable. It was a very dark night. 
The night sky of clouds and the moon wasn't out, even though it was night. I was still in a residential area, not in the middle of nowhere, so I could still see lights nearby from the houses. The lights, though, they were on, didn't seem as bright as usual. The street light by the railway crossing above the girl and I felt strangely bright. It was a spotlight shining on us. It felt like me and the girl were the only people on the earth at the time. Things were getting weirder and weirder. I scanned the area. There was nothing but darkness. When I returned my gaze towards the other side of the tracks, the girl in the red dress beneath the street light was gone. I guess that she couldn't wait any longer to cross and try to find another way. The chime of the railway crossing continued to ring out, and I stood there completely alone. I felt a deep sense of loneliness for some reason. Chills started running up my spine. I wanted to get out of there. Something weird was going on. I decided that it was unlikely that the train would pass and although my parents always told me not to, I would dip my head under the barrier and cross over the tracks. I went to get my bike I had set down on the ground. I mounted the bike and when my eyes faced forward again, I saw the little girl in the red dress. Our eyes met. She had no pupils in her eyes. Her eyes looked red. She said and smiled. In reaction, I stepped back and let out a scream. It felt like I had something I shouldn't have. I turned my head away and closed my eyes. A few seconds passed and I opened my eyes. And when I opened them, I saw that the barrier that prevented me from crossing the railway tracks was now up. The ding 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 of the crossing warning had stopped as well. Men and women were crossing and cars were on the road. Everything seemed normal again. I looked around for the girl. I couldn't see her anywhere. I had no idea what was going on. I had so many questions rolling in my head. I was really confused, but I was eager to get out of that place. I jumped on my bike and headed home. The next day, I was curious so I headed back to the railway crossing during the daytime. I stopped by after school. I didn't feel like it did that night before. I didn't use that crossing after that. Something about that night told me to stay away from it. I never saw the barrier down again, or the girl in the red dress, but I like to think that I was saved by her that night. I went for a walk in the middle of the night the other night, and I wished that I hadn't. It was a hot summer night and I had been up half the night studying. I wanted a little break from staring at the words in my books, notes, and the computer screen. I felt like going to the nearby convenience store to grab something to eat. The store was only about five minutes away, but I wasn't in a rush. I walked slowly. It was about 3 a.m., I think. It was so dark out, the only light I had to guide me was that of the street lights. There wasn't a soul around at that time of night. I jumped a little when I heard the sudden caw of a crow. I sped up my gate. Suddenly, a figure appeared to be ahead of me. It was weird to see someone out this late. The shadow of that figure appeared to be cast by a broken streetlight. It was flashing on and off. I saw the shadowy figure 
and I guessed that its height could have been no more than one meter tall, roughly three foot. I wondered, is that a kid up ahead? That thought really freaks me out. Why would there be a kid out here this late? And why was the child stood beneath a broken street light, unmoving? I wondered if it was just a trick of the light. I hoped that it was. I guessed that if it truly was a child out here alone, the worst thing I could do would be to ignore him or her. I would have to intervene. It didn't make the situation any less frightening for me though. I had to keep my cool and I pretended to walk calmly but with every step my legs shuddered. The figure approached as it stepped into the light and I realized that it wasn't a child at all but a woman. An old woman. She was bent at the waist to a 60 degree angle. She ignored me. She must have seen the fear on my face or noticed my jittery walk. Her face was expressionless. It was weird, but I tried not to be prejudiced. I told myself that the old lady was just out for a late night stroll. I mean, I was, and what was wrong with her doing the same? I felt like a bit of a jerk for acting so spooked out. I told myself to quit acting like a baby. I decided to look back and put my fears finally to bed. I expected to see the old woman 50 yards away from me, but when I turned, I nearly hit the deck because the old lady was right behind me. She looked in my eyes, almost enjoying the fear she had created, and smiled. I was petrified. I ran as fast as I could. I ran without a direction in mind. I just wanted to get away from the creepy old woman. The old lady called out at me as I ran. Don't run away. Quit acting like a baby. And with that, she cackled. How the hell did she know the exact phrase that I had just chastised myself with? I don't know if it was a real person or something otherworldly. The only thing I do know is that whatever it was scared the hell out of me. This happened last night and it seriously freaked me out. I couldn't sleep and it was about 1am. I decided to head out for a little walk. I'm a big fan of Pokemon Go, so I walked down to a nearby river to look for those rare water types. It was pretty dark out. There were the distant lights of the street lamps and the city buildings which kept the area slightly visible. I used to love going on late night walks. I find them to be very relaxing. I enjoyed them even more with the opportunity to catch some Pokemon. It was good that there was no one around as well because I was pretty glued to the game. It was nice to have the light from my phone too. I kept walking, staring at my phone, but then something appeared ahead of me. I looked up and realized that I was drawing closer to an old man with a shaved head wearing a suit, stood facing the river. I realized that I should have been watching where I was going because I almost walked right into him. I put my phone away and I looked at the old man. He seemed a little odd. He was stood next to a huge willow tree, staring out at the water. There was no wind. It was a still night. I felt a little weirded out, to be honest. Why was he looking out at the water at such a late hour? I decided not to stop and just keep on walking by. I wanted to take a look at him as I passed by, though. So I did, and he was as creepy as I thought he would be. I took a side-on glance at the guy. Now, this is going to sound really weird, but it looked like there was no depth to him like he was almost two-dimensional. There were none of the human curves we see every day. His head looked strangely elongated too. It was like his head had been compressed from the front to the back. Fear overcame me. I pretended not to notice him and I upped my pace. When I got about 10 meters away, I turned back to look at him. Something inside of me just really wanted to take a second glance. Even though it was dark, I could see the old man I don't even know if I can call him that actually, was looking my way. He wasn't facing the water anymore. Goosebumps ran up and down my body as I continued walking away. I thought it was all over, but then I heard a very disturbing sound. It sounded like that old man thing was using a voice recorder. I was on the verge of tears. It was so scary. It said,
That was it for me. I started sprinting back to my place. The sweat of fear kept me cold. Nothing else happened with that. I just think it's an incredibly weird and scary experience. I don't know if that was an alien ghost or someone who's just a little weird, but I don't go on late night walks anymore. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. I want to give a big thank you to my guest, Silver Underworld's Scary Stories. What an excellent job he did. Make sure you do go over and check out his channel. Subscribe, let him know who sent you because I think he's a really talented narrator. Please remember to subscribe so you never miss a story. Drop a comment, drop a like, stick around, watch another video, and I'll see you again soon.